In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. Listen to this, you who trample on the needy and try to suppress the poor people of the country. You who say, when will the new moon be over so that we can sell our corn and Sabbath so that we can market our wheat? Then by lowering the bushel, raising the shekel, by swindling and tampering with the scales, we can buy up the poor for money and the needy for a pair of sandals and get a price even for the sweepings of the wheat. That day it is the Lord who speaks. I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I am going to turn your feasts into funerals, all your singing into lamentation. I will have your loins all in sackcloth, your heads all shaved. I will make it a morning like the morning for an only son. As long as it lasts, it will be like a day of bitterness. See what days are coming. It is the Lord who speaks. Days when I will bring famine on the country. A famine not of bread, a drought not of water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. They will stagger from sea to sea, wander from north to east, seeking the word of the Lord and failing to find it. The Word of the Lord Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. They are happy who do His will, seeking Him with all their hearts. I have sought you with all my heart. Let me not stray from your commands. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. My soul is ever consumed as I long for your decrees. I have chosen the way of truth with your decrees before me. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, I long for your precepts. Then in your justice give me life. I open my mouth and I sigh as I yearn for your commands. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Teach me your paths, my God. Make me walk in your truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking on, he saw a man named Matthew sitting by the customs house, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at dinner in the house, it happened that a number of tax collectors and sinners came to sit at the table with Jesus and his disciples. 
When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your master eat with tax collectors and sinners? When he heard this, he replied, It is not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick. Go and learn the meaning of the words, What I want is mercy, not sacrifice. And indeed, I did not come to call the virtuous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, many of us would have experienced being in crisis before, yes? Either when things seem to be going well and then things take a turn for the worse. Or for some, things already look so bad and you, you, you didn't think how it could get worse, but somehow it did. That's the experience of crisis. We are shaken up, waken up, and in some ways, made to reevaluate our lives. And when things in our lives start to crumble and collapse, we start to recognize and see what sort of foundation have we been building our lives upon. And then we get an opportunity to begin anew. That is what the prophet Amos is foretelling the people about in our first reading as to what is going to happen to them and indeed to all of us as well. This is indeed one of the ways that God reaches out to us in our stubbornness, in our hardened hearts, in our fixed mindsets, as we go through our daily grind and even, even when we think we're all good. The Lord can come in and help us change our perspective from being, I'm all good, to God is all good. Such that I find that now I am losing control of my life and I'm ready to surrender and hand over control to God. This is when the sorts of phrases we say, you know, God, you are the center of my life. Or God, you are, you are my Lord and my King. Uh, or even the famous song by Carrie Underwood, right? Jesus, take the wheel. That's when it really becomes a reality. It really becomes true in your life and in my life. And if we can get to such a point the Lord will give us His grace to be able to. You know, dear brothers and sisters, <laughs> it's one thing to talk about crisis, and it's another thing altogether to be going through it. And it's really tough. And I know it's tough. And for those who have gone through crisis with the Lord, and even some from the Lord, we are then able to be there to share and to empathize and to support others struggling in crisis with our prayers and with our presence in how we can be Christ to them. Now, in our gospel today, Jesus calls Matthew, a tax collector, to follow him. And he follows. And nothing more was mentioned, but we can imagine what sort of impact an implication that must have had on Matthew, his job security, as well as the people around him, his whole world around him, how everything must have been quite shaken. And then what made things worse was that Jesus not only calls one tax collector, now he's having a meal with a whole group of tax collectors and sinners. <laughs> people that society detests, you know, people that society rejects. No one would ever want to or dare to be seen to be associated with them, let alone to have a meal with them. And Jesus does so. He breaks 
all societal norms. And the significance of sharing a meal was so great. Because in that act, Jesus not only shared a meal, shared food with them, but he shared himself with them. They had shared in the divine experience of Jesus. That God experience. And I'm sure many of us, you know, can resonate with the experience of sharing a meal. You know, especially as we meet up or some of us say uh, catch up with people over food and drink, over makan. That's when the sharing of life happens. And perhaps that's when someone will share with us that they might be going through a crisis. How then can I bring and be Christ to the other person who has shared with me something so deep, so personal and has made himself or herself so vulnerable to my response. And so, what did Jesus say in our Gospel? He said, Go and learn the meaning of the words, What I want is mercy, not sacrifice. He is inviting us to show mercy my dear brothers and sisters. Did we hear in the gospel about Jesus lecturing or giving them advice? No. He was just being present to them and befriending them without any judgment. Let us then, dear brothers and sisters, ask for God's grace. If we ourselves are going through a time of crisis, to cling on and to persevere and to trust in the mercy and love of God for you and I, for each of us, that indeed He is moulding us, shaping us anew, and drawing us closer to Him. And if, my dear brothers and sisters, if, if we find ourselves encountering others in their times of crisis, may we be led by the Holy Spirit to be the Lord's instrument of His love and His mercy to whomever we encounter especially those who are struggling. Amen. And so, with the Lord's grace and mercy, together as brothers and sisters, we support each other in prayer as we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.